All right. So that is uh, a book that I'm writing. I have an offer that I'm going to show you quickly at the end after I kind of give you an example of what I call the words plus approach. So everything that we've been talking about so far is words matter, translations matter, and how you interpret, choose to interpret your translations also matter. So this is a rhetorical question. Why does it seem Chinese people can't answer a simple yes, no question? And what are the downsides when you answer directly yes or no? So the answer is the Chinese mind is conditioned to leave itself an off-ramp for fear of blame, punishment, or worse. This is how the Chinese mind has been conditioned. They always want an off-ramp, which in Chinese is tai jie xia, which is why every time you question a Chinese person about something that may have gone wrong, their first reaction is to say something that sounds like an excuse. That is how their mind is conditioned. It is natural in Chinese spoken vernacular to be vague because, we talked about this, because it allows them to pivot toward a better explanation. Okay, so the more vague they were at the beginning, the more leeway they give themselves when something ultimately either goes wrong or the person that they're doing something for is unsatisfied. It leaves them a pivot where they can say, well, you know, this is kind of can be interpreted in multiple different ways. And a simple counter. So we're frustrated as Westerners when we communicate with Chinese people. And if you're in an intercultural relationship and you're dating, then you may encounter this quite a bit. Uh, there's a simple counter to this tendency. And that would be to direct your query at the explanation rather than the answer. Okay? When you ask a question that's a yes or no, you're never going to get an answer. If you already know what the outcome is, direct your question at their explanation. Because you know when you ask them, hey, did you do this, yes or no, they're not going to say, did they do this, yes or no. They're going to explain what happened. So the way to counter this tendency is to direct your query at the answer, at the, I'm sorry, at the explanation rather than the answer. All right. Let me try to break it down. Very, very simple example. So instead of asking someone, did you make this mistake? You might inquire, what do you think caused this? Even though you know they did it, even though you know they're to blame, you, when you reframe your question or your inquiry at the explanation rather than the answer, you're much more likely to get a constructive conversation. Let me break it down. The, so it's, if you, you can see it in colors. So did in Chinese culture is too direct given that Chinese culture is a very indirect form of communication. Okay, so did you cause this mistake is too direct. What? What happened? What do you think? What is much less aggressive and it's perceived as an inquiry rather than a rhetorical accusation. Every time you ask someone, Chinese person, about something that went wrong, their natural default assumption is that they're going to be blamed for something. Okay, Even if you say, I'm not blaming you, I just want to know. They've already defaulted to a defense mechanism. So they're going to come up with excuses. They're going to come up with circular explanations. So if you reframe your question uh, by changing the first word, you can get a different response. Do you think opens the door for discussion. Did you cause would be interpreted as an accusation and entice fear of repercussions. All right. And this mistake is actually a direct criticism, which instantly triggers a reflexive excuse or silence 
depending on the fear factor. Replacing this mistake with just this allows constructive dialogue to proceed to determine corrective action. All right, so this is how much words matter in Chinese culture. So the book, knowing exactly what to say, is how we condition ourselves in every situation you encounter in China to reframe the question and choose different words, whether we say it in English or we say it in Chinese, in order for the conversation not to start off. In order for the conversation not to start off as a confrontation, but as a constructive dialogue, and as someone who is a practitioner of this, I can see how almost everything that a Westerner says to a person in China could have been said differently to get a better reaction or response. <laughs>